after doing the Eurocom, surprisingly good result, Eurocom 40 yesterday, got a comment and somebody was saying it's surprising how good some radios which are a bit of a Billy No Mates brand can be. And he said he had a Eurosonic Euro 2. Now there was a Eurosonic Euro 2 in Roman numerals which is a great GT868 set but I think it means a Euro 2 as in figure 2. So let's see what we've got. Eurosonic Euro 2. So yes we've got one in stock. We paid two pounds for it from a radio rally and we've gone given it a D minus for condition. So I had a little look on what was available online with scans of British CB magazines and although we've got a lot of CB magazines we haven't scanned them um, so that they're not necessarily easy to find and I couldn't find the Eurosonic Euro 2 in anything online in the 20 minutes I put at it. So we'll go to the Tango Tower's kitchen and we'll go and look at the D- minus Eurosonic Euro 2 before we put it through the company dishwasher. On the way to the uh, Tango Towers kitchen we pass the Tango Towers CB filing cabinet and we have the Eurosonic file. Feels a bit empty. We have a scan of the or photocopy of the instruction book and there is a layout and a circuit diagram and a block diagram and that is the same information for the Alba CBM1 which is exactly the same radio if you see the Eurosonic Euro 1 if I recall right, it's the same but doesn't have the uh, switchable Roger Bleep, whereas the Euro 2 has a switchable Roger Bleep. And then the other set that sh shares the same chassis, there's four of them, the Euro Eurosonic Euro 1, Eurosonic Euro 2, Alba CBM 1 with its unique slider controls, and then finally there's the Harvard 400M. I also say it shares the same chassis. So let's go over to the workbench. So here we are at the workbench with the Eurosonic Euro 2 which has been through the dishwasher well the cases have oh, they were the that bit which fell out was the speaker wiring so that'll have to get renewed that's the back of it so you've got the high low power three and a half millimeter jack for the extension speaker and your aerial socket we've just got a short tail which I'll attend to underneath and it clearly says CB240 and the now much cleaner front and you can see it's quite a lot of wear so it's had a lot of use and that always to my mind bodes well because an immaculate set why didn't it have use so one of the snag points on these radios is the relay and you can find you get intermittent receive when it doesn't quite return back to receive and I'm disappointed these days there's a lot of new sets in 2020 which have relays and we really poo-pooed it even back in the 80s but there you are times don't change and they become a, a problem um, there's two ways of replacing the relay replace it with something that's 12 volts with with two with double pole changeover contacts and just put it on wires and wire it in to fit or find the right one like I did and I bought some from the United States and we've got one or two here in stock and they were the equivalent of £10 each plus delivery plus customs so by the time we did that they're very expensive 
they live in the Tango Tower safe. So on with the transmit. Well, we did. I did blow up a layout diagram, but I've done my own layout diagram because uh, it's just a bit clearer and less cluttered for me. And I did colour in the job yesterday, the Eurosonic. And was it Eurosonic? Am I getting muddled? Eurocom, Eurocom 40. Yeah, that was yesterday's. So that's where we are. So I'm going to start on the transmit. We do actually have a service manual for the Alba CV M1. Here you go. Uh, what should it be doing? It's a 4 watt radio, all right. It's 0 0.5 of a microvolt. Limit specs 0. Point, um, uh, it's one. Yeah. So the, we'll follow those phase lock loop um, setup instructions. The picture here, the actually shows the Eurosonic Euro One. So it doesn't show the Alba because the Alba's got slider controls. And it doesn't show the Euro 2 because it hasn't got the switch for the uh, Roger Bleep on and off. Then we've got a block diagram, the circuit, and the layout similar to what I've just photocopied. Voltage chart for the transistors, their adjustment layout. Printed circuit board blank, that's fun, isn't it? So you could actually make one. Imagine you, you, you get a scrap chassis which is smashed in half. You actually make a new printed circuit. Component locations. They are good manual. So we'll start with the VCO. Okay, so I've powered it up and it's so well worn that the meter lamp doesn't work. So we select channel 20 and test point 1 is resist is the junction between resistor 112 and I think it's 118. And it just says amongst the wax test point one. Now this we're going to go into chronic um, uh, pixelated zoom here because this camera is already at the extent of its um, optical zoom. So we're looking at just there. So you've got the CAN T10 and the resistor leg just there next to that transistor and that is the test point. So what we're looking for is 2.8 and we've got 2.3 which of course is neither here nor there. So we want to be adjusting transformer 7 now it's so it, everything's a photocopy of a photocopy even the service manual uh, is not that clear so which is 7 It is a typical example. I think it's that one, which is the one which isn't labelled. <laughs> See where I mean? What I mean? So two point eight. There we go, 2.8. Uh, if I'd have read the rest of the paragraph, he said in TX mode. So I'll plug the mic in. So we're now in TX and incidentally it's transmitting. We 
we've got 2.75 it really doesn't matter that it's fraction out wow done it on receive or just for my own interest it's now 2.81 okay that's it VCO set then what they want you to do is to put the thing on frequency with VC2 so the trimmer capacitive I'll just take away the meter and then we've got less clutter on here that's that done You know, every, every time I buy a batch of scrap chassis, whether it's just a radio rally or off eBay, there seems to be always more than one of these um, in the batch and always with the front missing. So you're never sure whether it's the Alba or the Harvard or the Eurosonic 1 or the Eurosonic 2. There's always the relay missing. There's always the output transistor missing. It's like this same every every. That's why I bought the relays in at great expense, and I do have the transistors in which I got in from the states. They're a Motorola in-house unusual one, and it's basically this is the same chassis really as the Harvard and Alba and Harrier forty-channel walkie-talkies, just on a different board arrangement and with four watts output. So it, really, the circuit's about the same, and of course the. Um, uh, rejection uh, for um, other transmitters is, is pretty poor but it doesn't matter these days so much because especially with us in the middle of nowhere so um, we've done that that's that's set so they want you to set the frequency next and I will just pause the video and we'll just make sure camera 3 is on So there we are. So we're going to transmit. We're on channel 20, so it should be 27 decimal 79125. 2779019. So we'll just look for VC2. And VC2. There's the court, there's the LC7137. Synthesizer chip. There's a 10.24 master oscillator crystal, and then next to it we have quite a nice quality variable capacitor. So seven nine one two five. We're looking for. That's the wrong way. There we are, 79126, that will do beautifully. So let's see what we're doing. What um, we're doing two and a half watts. While I was dishwashing the lids and the front and the knobs, which takes some dismantling, you've got to take the nuts off the knobs and you've got to uh, unscrew the LEDs uh, the, the warning ones for uh, TXRX and Roger Bleep on um, I did put the cases to the mic through and uh, I put that back together it was a broken pillar and I've uh, glued it back on but at least it's the original mic which is nice so we've done the VCO we've put it on frequency So it's transformer 2, 4, 8, and 9, and VC1. Let's 
see whether my sheet tallies with theirs. So two, four, Eight? That's surely in the receiver. That's nine. I couldn't read it on the on the radio with chassis I looked at. So two that's six four. Eight, nine, and VC one. Hmm. Sounds a bit weird to me, but that's what we'll do. It's ages since I did one of these. I did cover the um, Eurosonic Euro one in 2014. I checked before. Uh, we started this one. So we're going to transmit and we'll go for T2. So that's that one. So that was peaked. Two, four, well it is, eight, That feels broken, it, it doesn't also feel to be building any effect. Nine, which is on a bit of an angle. VC1. my picture in picture still it's about 3.8 uh, 2.8 watts there three something like that L1 which is lurking in the corner so having been to the phone and back in between it was the neighbour half a mile down the road just making sure I was still around um, We've got this, I've, I'll put it on the 3 watt scale, and you can see we've got a good 3 watts. It's uh, it's pegging the needle, so it's probably about 3.1. So that's the best I can get out of it on a 13.8 volt supply. It's very, uh, it's only drawing 60 milliamps as well, which is uh, nice if you're running it off a battery. So I think they'll want us to set the meter next, and... Let's just have a look at what the service manual says about that. Next we'll look at deviation. While I'm testing, ah, there is no deviation, but I saw the Roger bleeps. I'll just put our monitor receiver on. One, two, testing one, two, absolutely nothing. But the Roger bleeps there, so we have no audio, which Looking at this, I'll just zoom this out somewhat. Looking at this microphone, 
there's probably a wire off. Let's have a look. Well, I was right for once. wire off and it's clearly the audio one because it's the one that ha would have had the screen wrapped around it so it's quite simply come off that pin but I might change the plug because yeah that's what happens if part of the plug becomes missing you end up pulling the wires off so I'll get a new plug on there So I've done a nice new plug on there and I did just draw my sheet that's the glasses on the floor that's with the solder towards me so if the shroud wasn't put on like that and the ident at the bottom so it, the blue wire was received the red wire was transmit, the yellow wire which had come off was audio, transmitted audio, and the screen was to there. So we'll plug it in and see what happens. Wallow. So I'll turn that Roger bleep off now. And we'll get the oscillator. I can see there's some audio. And what I ought to have done is looked up to which control was deviation. They uh, used the dummy plug and the 560 ohm resistor uh, into a. What are we doing with the picture? Uh... They used the technique where you have a dummy plug and it goes to your signal generator, which is the best way to do it if you're doing all the same radios, but we're not doing all the same radios. So they want 2.2 kilohertz deviation, which is fine, and it's variable resistor 2. Variable resistor 2. Um, there's 3. We've done 1. Looks to be that one on the right. I'll just check with their layout. Yes, it is. Oh, so that was RF meter. That's VCO. And that is deviation. Wallow. How's that happened? Bit over the top, turn it down on there. Wallow. I think we've got to break in the mic lead. Wallow. Testing one two, testing one two, testing one two, one two one two. 
One two one two Wallo. Testing one two one two one two one two one two. I haven't got the plug in very well, so it's probably got dirty pins on the uh, on the socket. Testing one two, or it could have dirty contacts in the switch. Wallo. Testing one two. That'll do. So I'll use the. We'll use the service hole uh, spray on the switch contacts, and I'll clean the contacts on the on the socket radio on the, the radio socket as well uh, before we do an on the air test with this. So that's the transmitter and the VCO setup. We'll switch over to the sign up meter now. So the two receiver coils are. Five and six, five and six. So we need to just wax, melt the wax in the coil. We've got the cyanide meter on, turn that to about there. Melt the wax in the coil and just peak that. And with that yellow pesky wire, same with that. Turning down the attenuator. Remelt the wax. So that's 0 0.3 of a microvolt, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.1. Yeah, we can hear it throughout the attenuator's range, which is fair enough. But these aren't a high quality receiver, and um, you know, you can't expect it to have the kind of uh, signal rejection that things like the Rotel 230 and 240 would be able to offer. So the next thing is the S meter. So with an S9 signal, we may as well lose that camera. We want that to read S9. And it needs to be just a bit lower, and I understand it's VR3, which I understand is that one, and it is. That's a bit dirty, so I'll just put some switch cleaner on that. I've cleaned the controls whilst uh, I was doing something else. I think that's S9. I'll have to change glasses to read that. That's S9. So we've done that. Okay, so what does that leave us? I think it just leaves us VR4. So theoretically that would be squelch. So we'll see what the service manual says. A 
of squelch adjustments. Here we are. Set the volume control. Da, 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 da. Just VR4. So, absolutely. Squelch. Right, that's our final port of call. We'll turn the signal generator off. Set the squelch to threshold. That's handy. It only just goes off. I'll just uh, put some cleaner on that because the others have been a bit diffi difficult. We'll start with that set to nearly full. I'll rephrase that. We'll start with that with set to full. Signal drains are on. And it never comes in. Right, now we'll set it to threshold. And it comes in. But there's very little between full squelch and threshold. They are, it is a dreadful squelch on these radios, but it will do the sensitivity and it will do an S9. So, but it's on about a quarter of a turn. But if you've ever had a Harvard handheld or the Harrier WT2, the 40 channel one, or the Alba one with the same squelch circuit, you'll remember that the squelch wasn't brilliant on those either. And as the final check, I've put the RF power into low, and it is doing 0.3 of a watt. So it's a bit under the 0.4 that it ought to be, but it isn't adjustable. So there we are. We will put the wiring in, which has fallen out, for the speaker. According to the wiring diagram, the speaker simply goes off the extension speaker socket between those two points. So that's why it's such a short bit of lead. Right, I'll put it together and we'll just uh, plonk it on the aerial here. Well, that meter lamp was easier said than done, but it is done now. Um, what you have to do is take all the front off and the knobs off and the nuts which hold the potentiometers and I hadn't realized that um, otherwise I would have done it when I had the front off to go through the dishwasher but then I didn't know the lamp was out so it's one of those because I like to do these um, so that people can um, view these at home and see how we're progressing and not have had a sneak peek and done other repairs behind people's back so I'll just put it, I'll put it on the aerial and we'll just see whether there's anything out there. So it's Sunday afternoon at 3.20. Well, the squelch is actually doing something, which is... There you are. Right, we're going to do a um, on-the-air test with Mr Chippy later on, and we'll see how this performs.